right, hello wine drinking people. Time for more of what I've had to drink yesterday and our friends from Mason, Mark and Domains were in. This is one of the best portfolios of wine in the business. These guys own Louis Roderer, Pichon Comtesse. They have got some of the hottest names in Alsace, Schlumberger and um, La Poussie from Sancerre, <laughs> which is uh, our friends from La Doucette. And these guys, like I said, man, everything in the book, just at, I mean, top level. The Louis Roder Blanc de Blanc, we're always happy to help you drink champagne at any time of the day. This 2009 really rich bouquet. I love Blanc de Blanc, like tree fruit, white flowers, a little candy ginger in there. And uh, this is all 100% estate juice, like all the vintage wines are from Louis Roderer. Really bright and clean style. This Blanc de Blanc showing a lovely, smooth, creamy texture. A bit of that seashell kind of minerality, that chalky Camerigian minerality you get from champagne. A nice spice, candy ginger nose, pretty flowers. Most excellent juice. This wine even better on the second day. What? Champagne on the second day? Yes, champagne is... Like any fine wine, needs time to open up. It does lose a little effervescence, but what it gains in complexity to me is worthwhile keeping around. All right, the La Heritage wine from uh, Rotor Estate. This is their Mar Marquis Tete de Cuvée from their Anderson Valley property in California. It's a blend of Pinot Noir and Chardonnay, aged for five years. This wine's got a rich, toasty, biscuit-like, nutty character to the nose. Really ripe fruit. You know, one of the things I notice about... Tasting wine, champagne versus California sparklers. The California wines have richer fruit. And this wine showing that lovely candied lemon citrus and very rich and layered on the tongue. Really smooth, creamy bubbles. Uh, you notice that nutty, biscuity character through the finish as well. Really long and layered. Nice pop, a nice mineral pop at the finish. <clears throat> Most excellent juice at 45 bucks, half the price. Pretty similar in quality. Jomaine Slumbershay up next, the Pinot Gris Grand Cru for 30 bucks. Wow. I mean, what a great value this wine was. This may have been the best value of the whole tasting. Really strong, minerally character uh, to the nose here. Flinty note to that candied pear, kind of lime Jolly Rancher fruit. Pretty white flowers. Really opening up nice on the second day. This Pinot Gris, man, for 30 bucks. What incredibly rich and layered wine on the tongue here. Got a little bit of residual sugar like most wines do from Alsace, but a lot of acidity to match a long layered finish, man. Uh, you could keep this wine for 10 years easily. The La Poussie, which um, we've had this wine in the store before. Textbook Sancerre, the history of this amphitheater shaped vineyard goes back a thousand years and uh wow like i said it is a textbook sancerre really lovely lemon and white grapefruit citrus that chalky seashell kind of minerality showing here some green herbs as well this 2013 really refreshing on the palate light savory mineral character through the finish here leaves the tongue salivating for food one of the things we love about sauvignon blanc excellent juice at 30 dollars and then this quercibella batar which what an odd combination for a wine from uh, Tuscany, Chardonnay and Pinot Blanc. And uh, it's a vegan wine also. No animals were used or harmed in the making of it. In a thousand six-pack cases, they do botanage to richen this wine up. 25% new French oak. And wow, what a what a really cool wine this is, man. Like uh, at white peach, green apples, a little flinty minerally character, a hint of anise and vanilla spice. Really rich on your tongue. Just smooth and creamy. The bastard part between the two vineyards where nothing grows. Oh, the other reds won't grow, actually, that are in the vineyard, but Chardonnay and Pinot Blanc do well. That's named after the bastard part of the vineyard. Really rich and creamy and a long mineral lace finish. This wine even better on the second day. $96 a bottle. It better be most excellent. All right, then on to the best value area in France, Delas de Ventoux. This is an 80-20 Grenache and Syrah blend. Nice amount of berry pie fruit, really fresh flowers, herbs, that Garrigue-like character they have in the in the Rhone Valley. This wine's definitely got it for eleven fifty. Wow, really nice juicy berry fruit on the tongue, smooth silky tannins, and a nice hint of that uh, dark spice and floral note on the end. Very good juice. Carpe Diem. From Anderson Valley, that's right, they can make a Pinot Noir from Anderson Valley, a Cabernet, that's really good also, and this wine for 30 bucks, the vineyard's right across the street from Golden Eye, and uh, really pretty nose of black raspberry fruit, dark Asian spices, violet floral notes, really nice zesty finish on this wine, really uh, uh, nice silky smooth tannins, and uh, good structure here, excellent juice at $30 a bottle, on to my favorite grape, Nebbiolo Pio Cesare, the Barbaresco 2011. The only problem with this finish is it followed 2010. 
again, the 11 is a little bit more forward and drinkable. And this wine, classic Barbaresco, that red berry fruit, exotic spices, uh, pretty f rose petals, and uh, just liqueur-like on the tongue. Very rich. These 11s are already very showy. And uh, some dryness at the end, but hey, this is Nebbiolo. And one of the world's most age-worthy wines. You could keep this wine for 10 years easy, but like I said, already pretty showy right now. Excellent juice. And the De La Saint Joseph back to the Northern Rhone. We've got a nice bit of kind of underbrush, kind of mushroomy character, some dried meats here, this dark plum and blackberry fruit. Really nice rustic quality to the bouquet here. Nice freshness on the palate. This is the ultimate expression of Syrah, these Northern Rhones. This Saint Joseph showing nice fine tannins and uh, that rustic gamey quality through the finish here. Excellent juice at 43.50. That's right. This is a marathon tasting, folks. The Hermitage up next. And 100% uh, Syrah. This is a domain owned by Delos, one of the biggest producers in the Rhone Valley. And this wine has that same rustic character to it. Black pepper spice, a little dark plum and dark cherry fruit. Smoked meats, licorice. Really nice herbal quality there. Big and savory on the tongue. Uh, one of the things I love about Syrahs from the Northern Rhone, they have this savory character to them. Uh, they have all that fruit. But also this wild gamey character, man. Wow, just uh, that pepperiness. Uh, excellent example of Hermitage in 97.50. All right, the Poderi Nuovo a Palazzone. Uh, this is a blend of Sangiovese, Montepulciano, and Merlot from the Bulgari region. And a little bit of VA on the nose here, blowing off as this uh, super ripe black cherry liqueur-like fruit shows up with dark earth, fine herbs, chocolate-covered cherry, sweet tobacco spice. Really nice and big. It's somewhat uh, really drinkable here. Very soft tannins, uh, herbs and cocoa lasting through the finish. A very good little wine at $22.50. Mere Lust from Stellenbosch. A blend of Cabernet Merlot and Cab Franc. A hint of Petit Verdot in there. And this wine, what a unique bouquet, man. Just like cigar box, menthol, eucalyptus, uh, dark uh, currant berry fruit, uh, bitter cocoa, bigger and more complex as this wine opens up. Really nice spice to the finish here. That smoky tobacco and bell pepper and eucalyptus eucalyptus lasting through the finish man really unique and uh, i thought just excellent for 30 dollars a bottle wow chateau de pez from saint estef 2013 this one's got a, like a smoky campfire note to the nose black currants and gravelly minerally notes uh, on the second day this wine very nicely balanced this 13 already showing well and uh the tannins very round and ripe and uh, like I said, drinking very nice. Excellent example of a Saint Estef from 2013. The Poi Blanque from Saint Emilion up next. And uh, this 2010. Uh, one of my favorite vintages in Bordeaux. Really nice ripe fruit here showing. Dark cherry and plum. Pretty floral notes. Some loamy, earthy character. Dried tobacco spice. Nice richness on the tongue here. This wine's got good balance and wonderful freshness. These 2010s are going to be around for a while. Even these little Saint Emilions like this Boy Blanc at 32.25. All right, the Dominus Napa Nook. Well, this is the Moex family and one of the top vineyards in Napa. And this is their second wine, a blend of 95% Cabin, 5% Petit Verdot. In a great vintage like 12, they don't make much Napa Nook. They make a lot more Dominus, just like the great first gross of Bordeaux. So not a lot of this wine to go around, but wonderful richness, ripe cassis and currant berry fruit, sweet tobacco spice, espresso, dark chocolate, and more. Wow, just tremendously rich on the palate. Layers of that dark spice and earth, dark currant, dark chocolate, and just... Man, very, very delicious. Excellent juice at $60 a bottle. Your classic Napa cab made by uh, one of the top producers in the old world, Christian Moex. All right, the Castiglione del Bosco, Prima Pietere, Toscana. A blend of Merlot and a Cabernet with a little Cabernet Franc and a Petit Verdot for 18 months aged in oak. This wine's got a lot of dark plum and berry fruit, that fresh plowed earth character of Tuscany, baking spices, really complex, a little sage and herbs showing up there. Very rich and chewy wine on the tongue, lots of that ripe fruit, lots of the earth, and lots of that uh, herbaceousness showing up on the second day, dried mushroom, kind of earthy character, Black licorice spice, an excellent wine at 56, 25, and one more wine, man. This was one of the longest tastings we have had. The Ramos Pinto Late Harvest Port 2009, 25, 50. I mean, Late Harvest Port is one of the best values in the wine world. It's kept for five years in wood, unlike vintage port which is only kept in wood for two years so it's drinkable on release when this wine a lovely black cherry liqueur fruit really grapey kind of spirity note to the nose floral notes dark chocolate sweet and sappy on the tongue a little bit spirity but nicely balanced nice freshness here those floral character uh from the nose coming in at the finish very good juice at 25 50 one hell of a marathon tasting with our friends at mason mark and domains i'm your host andrew lampasoni signing off for the wine watch saying remember always drink the good stuff first